What's going on guys? Today we have our first AMD Ryzen processor and it is the Ryzen 7 1700. The Ryzen 7 lineup is made up of three processors. All three of these are eight core 16 thread processors. Starting at the top of the lineup, you have the Ryzen 7 1800X, and then moving down, you have the Ryzen 7 1700X. Both of these processors have a 95 watt TDP, and they feature AMD's XFR technology. The processor that we're taking a look at today, of course, is the Ryzen 7 1700. Now this processor has a 65 watt TDP and it does not feature the XFR technology. The processor will have a default clock of 3.0 gigahertz and it will boost all the way up to 3.7 gigahertz. So our processor came directly from AMD and it came in this really cool collector's edition type wooden box. Unfortunately, your processor won't come like that. It's gonna come in the normal retail box, which we have right here. And AMD has redesigned this box from the previous uh, Bulldozer series. So you have the orange and the gray there with the Ryzen logo on the front. And then you have the series listed in the bottom corner here. So this is a Ryzen 7 processor. So we have a seven there. Of course, with a five, you'll have a five and three and so on. Before we jump into testing, here are some shots of the processor before we put it in our test bench. As you can see, it does have the Ryzen logo nice and big on the front as well as the product number. Before we jump into testing, here are the stats of our three different systems. While they're all pretty much the same, some of the components definitely have to differ, obviously because we're testing different platforms. And now key the music, here are the benchmarks. Moving on to overclocking, overclocking on this platform is extremely easy. Now with our motherboard, which is the Asus ROG Crosshair 6 Hero, there was a four gigahertz profile already built in. So you just select it and you're at four gigahertz. While our system did boot at four gigahertz, we were not stable. We tried everything to make it stable. It just, it just wouldn't work out for us. So we moved things down to 3.9 gigahertz and that was our final stable overclock. So we have all eight cores running at 3.9 gigahertz and that's with the V core set on auto. Now I was still kind of, not mad, but just kind of upset that I wasn't able to get all the way up to four gigahertz. I think once we get more BIOS updates and this platform sort of matures, we'll be able to hit higher overclocks with this chip. 
So Ryzen is finally here and it definitely has to be the most anticipated piece of PC hardware that's come out in my lifetime. Now with that said, it obviously brings competition between AMD and Intel and that's a good thing. Whether you're a fan of AMD, whether you're a fan of Intel, competition brings pricing down and it allows companies to innovate and that just makes it better for us who are the consumer. Now down to the nitty gritty which is performance. Now when it comes to you know pure CPU performance and multi-threaded performance, these Ryzen processors really shine. They completely blow out Intel's core series processors when it comes to multi-threaded testing. Now in single-threaded testing, they're a little bit closer, so it's kind of a mix-up between you know either the Core i7-7700K or this processor. When it comes to gaming, that's something where Ryzen doesn't shine as greatly. In our test, both the Core i7-6700K and the Core i7-7700K do better in gaming tests. Now this is something that AMD has addressed and they're working with developers to fully optimize for Ryzen, but it's something you definitely want to keep in mind if you're looking to build or buy a Ryzen system. Now one thing that I did want to address when it comes to the Ryzen platform is just how unstable it is. While it's not like super unstable, it was sort of a pain in the ass getting our system set up and getting it to run correctly. There are a couple things. One, you do have the memory issues, which I'm sure you've heard about. If you're running memory that's, 20, or that's over 2133 megahertz, you're gonna run into issues where you actually have to overclock the processor to get the memory running at the correct speed. While this is fine for a lot of people, for our case, we wanted to run the processor at its default speed. So with that, we only had one kit here that would actually do that and allow us to run it at the speed it was set for and not have to overclock the processor. The second thing is just like the BIOSes. Uh, we have a couple AM4 boards here and there's been like five or six BIOS updates in two weeks, uh, which seems a little crazy. I know they're fixing issues, but you know, if you're a first time builder and you don't know much about updating your BIOS, it can be a pain. So you have all that. So that's definitely something you're gonna wanna keep in mind if you're building a Ryzen system. So is Ryzen for you? Well, I think that AMD has made a big splash with their Ryzen 7 processors and it's definitely made them competitive against Intel. Now, this Ryzen 7 1700 pretty much beats out the Core i7-7700K in most tests. And it does it at a lower TDP and more controlled temperatures and at a price of only $329. So if you have any questions about this processor or the Ryzen platform, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. Until next time, catch you guys later.